Welcome back after the break. Uh, before we went for our break, we were looking at uh, the signs of the coming of the kingdom. Uh, we looked at um, Luke chapter 21, verses 27 to 32. Uh, we look at um, one sign of the kingdom, the coming kingdom, verse the kingdom um, uh, in, in Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. The same thing is fulfilled in Mark chapter 11, verse 10. So can somebody please read uh, Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9, and somebody else can read Mark 11, verse 10, please. Zechariah 9, 9, and Mark 11, 10. Chapter 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding on a donkey, a coal, the pole of a donkey. Okay, Rosalind, you can read Mark 11 10, please. Mark 11 10. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Thank you. So here we see that uh, how is the king going to come? What does it say in Zechariah chapter 9 verse 9? How is the king going to come? Riding on a donkey. <laughs> Riding on a donkey. Uh, he's going to come lowly in a very humble way uh, and riding on a uh, donkey. So here we look, we see an anticlimax. You know the kings were uh, the sorry the Jews were looking for uh, the king to come. You know who will ride on a horse and uh, you know with a sword and he will fight the battle and he will overthrow everyone that is uh, who are uh, you know uh, uh, troubling the Jews, persecuting them, and he will establish uh, the, the kingdom for the Jews. And here we see uh, an anticlimax. Um, you know, the one who was to be king, the one who is going to be the king, the king of the Jews, uh, the king of all the world, the king who's uh, coming in the line of David, the branch of, who's a branch of righteousness, whose kingdom uh, is from eternity to eter eternity, whose kingdom will be established forever, he comes riding on a donkey, you know. I mean, uh, uh, if it was some other animal, we could understand, but donkey is, you know, we, what we consider as a donkey, something that, you know, uh, is something that's not really worth anything. But uh, so we see that, you know, he comes very lonely, comes uh, lowly and comes riding on a donkey. Uh, but, you know, he had a mission to fulfill. And that mission was the redemption of uh, the people of this uh, world. OK. Uh, and he knew that, you know, this had to be done. Uh, uh, so that, you know, the kingdom that he prepared or the kingdom that is prepared for all eternity uh, could have the people that he planned uh, to inherit, even before the foundations of, of the world, they could inherit the kingdom and they could administer the kingdom here on earth. So here we see that, you know, God's wonderful plan, uh, you know, how systematic his, we can see his infinite wisdom uh, we can see his uh, omniscience here that, you know, uh, that, you know, he knows everything that's going to happen. But yet, uh, you know, he has a plan even before the foundation of the world. He knows what things are going to come to hinder his plan. But yet we see how he uh, accomplishes accomplishes it in spite of all the hindrances. And so here we see that, you know, he came the first time. He came uh, lowly, uh, came riding on a donkey. He came as the Lamb of God uh, who was going to take away the sins of the world. And he knew that, you know, he had to do this even before he came as a Lion of Judah. Even before he came as a king to rule, he had to come as the Lamb of God. Because without coming as a Lamb of God, you know, he could not, uh, uh, you know, fulfill uh, uh, the other uh, plan of his that is to establish his literal kingdom here on earth. Uh, uh, and even if he does, you know, no one will be part of that kingdom. But, you know, if he, uh, who is the Lamb of God, 
completes um, the redemption of the mankind, uh, the work of redemption for mankind, you know, then people could be uh, would, would would inherit the kingdom that he had established, that he will establish, and they can administer that kingdom here on earth. So we see, you know, God's uh, wonderful plan. Um, uh, how he unfolds it, how he reveals it, and how he unfolds it. And we see Jesus uh, coming on the donkey, and uh, you know, uh, and people shouting Hosanna in the uh, highest. Okay, and then he's going to come as not the Lamb of God, the second time. He's going to come as a king riding on the horse. He's going to come as the Lion of Judah, who's going to rule. Uh, with the iron hand, the iron fist, okay, and we are going to be part of that millennium kingdom where he himself will rule and reign. Another sign, uh, you know, of uh, the, the coming of the kingdom, uh, we read in um, um, we read in Matthew chapter 26, verse 29, and Luke chapter 22, verses 16, verse 18, and verses 29 to 30, uh, where Jesus says, you know, uh, but I say to you, uh, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until the day when I drink it uh, new with you in my Father's kingdom. And Luke chapter 22, verses 16, 18, 29, and 30, it says, For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. For I say to you, I will not drink the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And I bestow upon you a kingdom, just as my Father bestowed upon you. Uh, upon me, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. So the celebration of the Lord's table, you know, uh, is talking here about the celebration of the Lord's table. Uh, it's also a way that we express, not only um, uh, express uh, what Jesus has done on the cross for our sins and receive the full blessings of the cross into our lives when we partake of the Lord's table, but also it's our expression of our faith in the coming kingdom. Okay, so Jesus told us that he will not eat the bread and drink the cup uh, with the promise that he will drink it with us once again in the uh, kingdom. Okay, it's also an expression of our faith that uh, we shall, here it says that we shall rule and rain, um, you know, just as the, uh, you know, just, and uh, 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 Jesus bestows upon us the kingdom uh, which God had planned even before the foundation of the world, just as he had bestowed upon, just as the Father had bestowed upon the Son, uh, the kingdom, and he came here and he ushered in the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, the same way uh, Jesus has given us the kingdom, he's given us uh, back the keys the authority of the kingdom. He has given us the, uh, the power and the authority to rule and have dominion over his kingdom, which he, uh, you know, he took back from Satan on the uh, cross. So each time we partake in the Lord's table, we're declaring that through all eternity, you know, uh, we are going to sing his praises and forevermore we shall reign with him. So as believers, you know, we live with this blessed hope of, uh, of a place uh, in his heavenly uh, kingdom, okay? Second um, Timothy 4, verse 18 says, you know, that um, he will deliver us from the evil one. He will preserve us uh, so that we can, uh, you know, live our lives here so that we can be part of his heavenly kingdom. And, uh, you know, to him goes all glory and honor and uh, majesty and power forever and ever, okay? And Second Peter chapter 1, verses 10 and 11 says, Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure, for if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we have an assurance that we can enter the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Okay, so the final question, uh, what is the final question? Uh, in Acts chapter 1, verse 6 uh, to 8, you know, uh, it says that when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, when will you at this time restore the kingdom of uh, Israel? And he said to them, it's not for you to know the times and seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the 
earth. Now, this uh, after his resurrection and before Jesus' ascension, his disciples had still not fully understood uh, you know, the two phrases, the kingdom of God and the coming of uh, the king. Okay, so the first phrase, uh, you know, the first phase that Jesus came into this earth, he uh, introduced the spiritual dimension of the kingdom where, you know, he came as the Lamb of God uh, to take away the sins of the world, um, uh, to, you know, to purchase our redemption uh, so that we can be part of that literal kingdom that he is uh, the second phase uh, of his coming again where he's going to establish the literal kingdom. So, uh, so it's a spiritual kingdom because uh, it's a kingdom that's born in our hearts and our lives and our spirit man as we accept Jesus as our personal um, savior okay but they uh, they did not uh, uh, you know think in in those terms um, uh, uh, they they were thinking that very soon Jesus would set up his literal kingdom and uh, you know they were very disappointed because here Jesus is telling them that he's going to leave and uh, you know they they have not seen any aspect of his literal kingdom they're very disappointed um, you know, and they are wondering what is Jesus going to do about the literal kingdom? Where is his literal kingdom? So that's why they ask him about it. And then he points them, you know, uh, to a different mission. And what is that mission? He's pointing them uh, to the power that they will receive uh, when the Holy Spirit comes upon them. And that power will enable them to be his mighty uh, witnesses. Okay, um, uh, you know, to proclaim the kingdom of God uh, uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit to the whole world. And so this is the period that we are in, and this is our present mandate. Uh, and then there will be a time when, you know, uh, the Father in his own set time, the Kairos time, you know, when he will uh, send back his son and, his, uh, and he will establish uh, the literal kingdom here on the earth, okay, and then comes the end. So, First Corinthians chapter fifteen, verses twenty-four to twenty-eight. So, can somebody read that, please? First Corinthians chapter fifteen, verse twenty-four to twenty-eight. Then comes the end, and he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, and he puts an end to all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death. For he has put all things under his feet. But when he says all things are put under him, it is evident that he who put all things under him is accepted. Now, when all things are made subject to him, then the Son himself will also be subject to him who put all things under him, that God may be all. Thank you, Jeffina. Amen to that. And so we see that at the right time, you know, the Lord Jesus uh, will be revealed from heaven. He will come down with the saints, those who have been taken uh, away with him. Uh, during the rapture and then he will overthrow Antichrist and all the nations that support Antichrist. We read about this in Revelation chapter 19 and 20 and thus fulfilling what the psalmist foretold in Psalm chapter 2 verses 6 to 10. He says, yet I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion. I will declare uh, the decree the Lord has said to me, you are my God. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will give you nations for your inheritance, the ends of the earth for your possessions. And he says here, you shall break them with the iron rod. You shall dash them to pieces like a porter's vessel. Now, therefore, be wise, O kings, be instructed, you judges of the earth. So here we see that Jesus will put an end to all other rule, all other authority on the earth. He will establish his kingdom on this earth. He will subject his kingdom to uh, the rule, the will, the, uh, you know, to the perfect obedience, to righteousness and holiness of the Father. Um, and, uh, you know, in verse 25 uh, of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, where we read, For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet, uh, you know, 
seems here that Paul is alluding to what the psalmist describes in Psalm 110 verse 1. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Okay, so this is, uh, you know, what will happen uh, when the, you know, end comes and how Jesus is going to establish his kingdom. So this is just very briefly about uh, the literal kingdom uh, that, um, uh, you know, that we just basically uh, saw. So we basically saw the, in the literal kingdom, we saw the, uh, you know, that God's original plan that he's going to establish his little kingdom. We saw the prophecies to Jacob um, and his covenant to David uh, to, and his, the promise he made to Jeremiah and what was spoken by, prophesied by Isaiah, what was spoken of by Daniel. And then we see there was a temporary pause in the lineage of the kings of David because they were all taken as captives, but, you know, God still went ahead and fulfilled uh, his plan and uh, purpose uh, and he announced the coming of uh, the king, uh, the Lamb of God. Um, it was announced to Mary. And then we see Jesus, we saw Jesus' teaching on the literal aspect of the kingdom where it cannot just be the Jews, but also be the Gentiles. And the Jews uh, will, uh, will also not be part of the Messianic, some of the Jews will also not be part of the Messianic um, uh, uh, banquet. We saw the preview of the coming of the kingdom and the signs of the coming of the kingdom and uh, we know what will happen in the end. So this is very briefly about the literal kingdom that uh, God is uh, going to establish uh, when Jesus is going to come and rule and reign here on the earth for a thousand years. Okay, so any questions anyone has? Any questions? Okay, I hope all of you are with me in class and uh, following. If you have any questions, please you can ask any doubts. Okay, if there are no questions, then we will move on to the last chapter in this uh, book, the topic, uh, The Kingdom of God, uh, The Kingdom Mandate. Okay, thank you, Zeltoli. Thank you, Subhashis. Okay, so we, if you don't have any questions, then we'll go on to the kingdom uh, mandate. Uh, so we just saw that, you know, uh, Jesus came to introduce his kingdom to us um, uh, in, in its spiritual form. We're now living and sharing in that kingdom, uh, but he did not intend for this kingdom to fade away. Uh, you know, uh, but he wanted it to be like that mustard seed that would grow into uh, a bush, a big tree, or like the the leaven, you know, that is just put into that lump, uh, which permeates and infiltrates the, the entire, uh, the lump and, you know, uh, causes it to, you know, become nice and fluffy so that there can be nice bread that is produced. Uh, so the same way, the kingdom of God is like that, you know, it is uh, not just something that uh, God intended to be there for, for some period of time uh, and to fade away, uh, for example, you know, fade away after my Adam and Eve sin, but we see that he still had this plan and purpose of bringing about his kingdom. He chose the Jews and when the Jews and son, he sent his uh, son and, uh, you know, through his son, even the Gentiles were becoming part of the kingdom of uh, God, okay? Uh, and he also is uh, expecting uh, us to continue his kingdom uh, uh, in and through us, who are the sons and daughters of the kingdom who is placed on this earth, uh, who he has redeemed with his uh, precious blood, you know, uh, he has redeemed us uh, not just for us to, you know, um, have this privilege of going to heaven, but we have this responsibility uh, because he has given us the keys of authority. He has given us the power. He has given us uh, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven to rule and reign here on earth. And so it's our responsibility that we are to, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, be that mustard seed, be that leaven, 
be that salt and light where we are permeating, infiltrating um, every sphere of our lives, every area of our lives, every place that God has, uh, you know, uh, put us um, uh, to bring about his kingdom reign, his kingdom rule, his kingdom government, his kingdom culture, lifestyle, kingdom values, uh, wherever he's placed us, wherever we step in, wherever we go. So we see that there is a kingdom mandate on our lives. And what is the kingdom mandate on our lives? It is to see his kingdom come, his will be done on earth at this, as it is in heaven so there is a mandate uh, there is a commission there is a responsibility there is a call upon our lives that jesus has placed uh, which is the kingdom mandate and jesus put it this way when he asked us to pray he said pray this way he said in matthew chapter 6 verse 9 and 10 uh, you know you need to pray this way our father in heaven hallowed be your name he said your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So the kingdom mandate is to see his kingdom come, his will be done on earth in and through you and me. So in our home, you know, we can pray and say, God, let your kingdom come, let your will be done, uh, you know, as you wish, as you desire, uh, on uh, as it is in heaven here in my home if you're living in an apartment complex you can say the same prayer lord you know let your kingdom come let your will be done uh, in this uh, apartment complex you're living in a neighborhood uh, you know people that you're living with some you know some you don't know but you can still pray god let your kingdom come let your will be done in my neighborhood you can pray the same prayer uh, when you step into your office you know in your office you have friends colleagues uh, bosses, some whom you like, some whom you don't like, though you don't get along with, you don't agree with, but yet you can still pray the kingdom mandate. You can say, God, I want to see your kingdom come. I want to see your will be done here in my office, here in the lives of my uh, friends, my colleagues, my uh, bosses. So it's our responsibility to see his kingdom come and his will to be established in our lives. So wherever you know, or we go, we need to pray this, uh, whether it's in our home, you know, uh, praying God's kingdom come and will be established in our home, you know, uh, whether it's going to be in our office, whether we're going to the market, whether we are, uh, you know, are going to our uh, uh, church or whether we're visiting a family, uh, visiting somebody in the neighborhood, uh, Wherever we go, you know, this should be our prayer. God, let your kingdom come, let your will be done, uh, and uh, let your kingdom be established in this home, in this office, uh, in this shopping mall, in this marketplace, in my city, in my nation, in my uh, neighborhood. And when we pray like that, you know, we are going to be part of that answer to that prayer. So even as you pray, you know, Lord, let your kingdom come, let your will be done. God is saying, okay, it's going to come in and through you. I'm going to bring it about. Because we know that we have a prayer answering God who listens to our every prayer. And he's a God who answers our uh, prayer. We already have learned uh, what Jesus said in Luke chapter 17, verses 20 to 21. He said, you know, um, and now when he, uh, the Pharisees asked him, when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said that the kingdom of God does not come with observation. We've already studied this. We've already looked at it. He said, uh, nor will they see, uh, you know, nor will they say, see here or see there, you know, uh, for the kingdom, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. Okay, I'll just read that again. Uh, when the Pharisees asked Jesus when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation. Okay, he said, nor will they say, see it's here or see it's there. For indeed, the kingdom of God is within you. So the Pharisees here, you know, we uh, see that they came to Jesus. They were trying to figure out how this kingdom is coming. You know, Jesus is preaching about the kingdom of God. He's saying, repent for the kingdom of God is here. But they're wondering, where is the kingdom and how is it going to come? And Jesus said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation, which means that he's saying that the kingdom of God does not will not come with great fan and fair, you know, just like they're expecting or just like they're expecting. It will not come like, you know, the traditional monarchs, which uh, who will, you know, march or you know, have this great parade uh, going before them. But he said the kingdom of God is within you. 
Okay, the kingdom of God is spiritual aspect of the kingdom, the spiritual dimension of the kingdom that he was talking about. So we see that, you know, there is uh, uh, the potential of God's kingdom to be released into the place uh, or into the places, into the situations that we go in, step in or enter into because um, wherever we walk in, you know, the kingdom of God is within us. We are carrying the kingdom of God. Uh, we are, the kingdom of God is in us and we can influence our environment. We can influence our home, our offices, our marketplace. Uh, we can influence our situation situations that we are going through challenging situations because the kingdom of God is in us and we have the kingdom authority and the power and the potential of God's kingdom can be released in and through us because it's the spiritual aspect of, uh, of the kingdom the spiritual dimension of the kingdom the king and the kingdom of God is within us so you know we are carrying uh, this kingdom and uh, you know we are carrying this kingdom to manifest this kingdom. Okay, we're not just carrying this kingdom uh, because we have a place where we will go and be with in eternity, but we're carrying this kingdom within us, uh, which, uh, you know, will be a manifestation of the kingdom. That means wherever we go, we are manifesting uh, the kingdom of God. That means we're showing forth, we're bringing forth. Uh, uh, the kingdom of God is going to prevail and pervade uh, the environment, the situation, and uh, God's uh, authority, uh, God's values, God's uh, kingdom lifestyle, culture, uh, you know, is just going to influence and prevail in that place because we have stepped in that place, because we are carrying the kingdom of God uh, in us. So the, uh, the kingdom, uh, the authority of the kingdom and the power of, that, uh, of the kingdom of God, we carry it into every situation, into every place that we are going to. So, you know, we don't get overwhelmed with the situation that we're facing. We don't get overwhelmed with the situations in the office, with the people that are making life difficult for us or the situations in our home, uh, you know, uh, our relationships in our marriage or, uh, you know, the problems, the strife at home, uh, struggle with, the, uh, with children. But, you know, we dominate we learned that, right? We dominate uh, situations. We dominate our environment. Why? Because we are, uh, you know, we are seated. Uh, we have a position. We now, when we are accepted Christ our Lord and our Savior, when we are in Christ, you know, we not only recognize with His uh, His death, His burial, His resurrection, uh, His ascension, but also with His seating. That means we're also seated with Him at the right hand of God the Father, which means that we operate out of a place of uh, authority. Uh, and we are an authority over every uh, situation, over everything that is influencing our environment, our world, our kingdom, so to say. And uh, because the kingdom of God is in us, we need to, uh, you know, uh, let that kingdom of God, this power and authority that is in us to be released uh, into the places that we are going to, into the situation. So we don't be, feel overwhelmed by the situation or the places that we are in uh, because, you know, Satan is under our feet. That is where he is. Uh, we just work and act from a place of divine authority, uh, divine power. And uh, we need to, uh, you know, uh, we need to speak uh, to those situations because we have that kingdom authority and power and we need to see the kingdom authority and power being released and changing our situation and changing our environment and we need to live you know this way we need to live conscious of this kingdom that is uh, within us because the kingdom of god is righteousness peace and joy that is within us. We learned all of this, okay? So just kind of reiterating uh, what we've learned. So the kingdom of God is about righteousness and peace and joy, and that kingdom is within us. Uh, the power and authority of the kingdom is within us. You know, the prevailing forces of the kingdom of God is uh, within us. And wherever we go, this kingdom of God has been carried, has been um, taken. And so we see that, you know, we have an opportunity for the advancement of the kingdom of God wherever we go. There is an opportunity also for the manifestation of the kingdom's authority and dominion into every situation that we um, 
enter in. Okay, but there's one thing that we need to understand about the kingdom of God. You know, there is a dichotomy or there is a paradox. Uh, there are two opposites. Uh, Jesus said, and we learned about this, you know, unless you are like a little child, you cannot enter the kingdom of uh, God. So there is this whole uh, dimension of exp of experiencing uh, God's kingdom, which requires uh, childlikeness, a childlike attitude, where it is totally abandoning ourselves uh, into the hands of, uh, of God, totally just trusting Him, uh, totally just believing Him, totally just having our faith in Him. Uh, uh, you know, but there is another aspect of uh, uh, the kingdom of God that we need to understand, which is a total opposite of uh, you know of what it requires to be childlike. There are sometimes when God expects us to be childlike, but there are sometimes in some areas of our life where he wants us to be in you know act in a different way and it says in Matthew chapter 11 verse 12 and from the days of John the Baptist until now the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force so the kingdom of heaven suffers violence but he says the violent take it by force or we read uh, in Luke chapter 16 verse 16 where it says the law and the prophets were unto John since that time the kingdom of God has been preached and everyone is pressing uh, into it so there are areas in our life where God expresses to be childlike we don't understand we just uh, you know uh, abandon ourselves to what God is saying total obedience total submission you know we just put our faith and trust in God and he wants us to be childlike uh, in some areas but there are some areas in our life where God you know at times God wants us to be militant in the spirit he wants us to be militant like in the spirit. He expects us to be aggressive. He expects us to be uh, violent in the spirit. And unless he says we are violent in the spirit, you know, we cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And he says, you know, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by uh, force. And this is something we really need to um, understand that being, you know, or being childlike is easy. Just trusting God, just abandoning ourselves to God is easy, but there are certain areas of our life when He calls us to be like warrior like in our spirit, uh, where He says we need to take the kingdom by force, we need to be forceful, uh, we need to press in into the, uh, the things of the, the kingdom. Now, we would ask this question why do I need to press in? You know, is God holding back, uh, you know, some things that, uh, you know, uh, uh, that I need to, uh, you know, press in and take hold of him or, you know, twist his arm. Or, you know, it's not God that is holding uh, back anything from us because Jesus said in uh, Luke chapter 12, verse 32, do not fear, little flock, for it's your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Okay, so what is the Father's good pleasure? The Father's good pleasure is to give us the kingdom. Okay, so it is his good pleasure uh, to give us the kingdom. He wants to give us the kingdom. He wants us to have uh, righteousness, peace, and joy, which is the characteristics of his kingdom. Uh, God wants to give you, uh, 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 you know, what is in his kingdom. And it is his good pleasure to give you that uh, kingdom. He's, this, is, this is good pleasure to give us the kingdom of God. And so it's not God saying that, you know, I am holding it back, you know, and we need to wriggle or twist his arm to get it out from him. But, you know, what is holding back? You know, what is holding uh, us back? And why should we be violent and aggressive and militant like and warrior like in our spirit? Um, because we face two great enemies. Now, one enemy we all know know is uh, Satan, his forces, the principalities, the powers of darkness uh, that hold back, you know, what God has intended, uh, what God has purposed, uh, what God has designed for us to have. You know, he, uh, Satan holds it back and we need to fight and we need to take back, you know, what is rightfully 
um, us. And uh, we know that, you know, God has prepared us for this. He's prepared us to be a militant in our spirit. He's prepared us to be violent and forceful. He's prepared us how to subdue the enemy. Uh, how do we know that? You know, he's given us the weapons for warfare. He's given us everything that we need for life and godliness. Ephesians chapter 6, which talks about our spiritual armor that we need to uh, put on. So, you know, why would God give us a the spiritual armor if we are not going to be fighting you know spiritually if you're just going to be receiving everything because of what he's done on the cross yes he's done everything on the cross it's it's a done thing it's a completed thing um the blessings are ours but we have two enemies and and the first one is uh satan you know who holds back what god has intended designed and purpose for us and at such times when we know that you know it is ours healing is ours peace is ours so there should be no strife in our home our children should uh, uh, uh should be saved they should be growing and walking uh, uh, in righteousness and holiness they should love the lord you know our marriages should be stable and should be filled with the love of god you know when things are not going right and uh, we should you know we should be people not living in poverty but we should be living um we should be head and not the tail we should uh, you know we are blessed of the lord so when these when we don't see this happening in our world uh in the areas of our life then we know that it's not God that is holding it back from us. Uh, we need to know that you know this is what God has already given to me on the cross. It's rightfully mine because you know He tells the the woman, uh, the Sinophidian woman, you know, He says, uh, you know, uh, 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 when she says, you know, please heal my daughter, he says, uh, you know, this is this is not your right, you know. So uh, healing is our birthright. He's saying it's the right of the Jews and it's not the right of the Gentiles. But, uh, you know, when Jesus died on the cross, you know, healing is our birthright. That means it, it's our right. We we are born into the kingdom of God and we need to inherit it. It's, it's just ours. But when we don't uh, see it happening in our lives, we just, just don't give up and say, okay, it's it's something that is there in my body. I can't do anything about it. This is what the doctors say. I just live with it for the rest of my life. Maybe I have to die with it. No, we don't live like that because, you know, this is not what God has intended and purpose and design for us. You know, we need to fight and take back what is rightfully ours. And the other enemy, you know, is uh, very closer to home. It's right beneath our skin. Uh, it's our flesh. Okay, so sometimes uh, to experience the kingdom of God and to receive uh, what was in the kingdom of God and to receive what God has said and what we need to inherit, we need to fight these two enemies. This en the enemy is Satan, his forces, the principalities, powers, darkness, the curses that he puts on us. And also we need to fight our flesh. You know, left to itself, our flesh will be happy uh, to take us uh, to help but we need to fight and we need to crucify it and crucify the ungodly desires and we need to press in uh, to take what god says is ours and that's why jesus said you know we need to crucify uh, you know and paul said crucify the flesh okay um and its uh, desires so you know we need to uh, be ready to be forceful so get ready to be forceful if you're not already being forceful if you're not being pressing in if satan has uh, you know invaded your life and made your lives in some areas a misery a pain you're just living with it it's like a bondage it's like a struggle but you know get ready to be forceful uh be, get ready to press in get ready to you know uh, to even uh, fast and pray the prayers that need to be prayed uh, you know, to break through, to to get back what God has intended for you, designed for you, uh, uh, and what is rightfully yours. And, you know, we need to be willing uh, to stand, you know, as we ought to stand in faith and say, God, you know, I'm willing to do what it takes uh, to press in, to see uh, the kingdom blessings come upon my life and to inherit uh, God what you said I would inherit to take what you have purchased on the cross with your precious blood which you gave your very life you know I'm just willing to press in uh, to forcefully at times take uh, what is mine uh, what is my birthright what you have purchased on the cross for me and um, you know anytime uh, you know we uh, we give up in our fight or we refuse to fight you know we have already lost the battle by 
default. Okay, some areas of our life we have given up, the Satan has taken hold, whether it's our marriage, we've given up on our children, we've given up on our job, we've given up on our parents, our relations, uh, relationships with people, we've given up on you know certain health issues that we are facing. You know, uh, you know, uh, God is reminding us and telling us today, you know, uh, don't give up. You know, uh, get back into the battleground. I've given you every weapon that you need. Put on the armor of God and stand and fight. Uh, you know, because um, you don't stand from a point of defeat, but you're already standing from a point of uh, victory. So if, uh, you know, you've already lost the battle, if you refuse to fight, uh, by default, you've already lost the battle. Sometimes when we face uh, problems, you know, or we do give up and we say, you know, this is an area where I can't experience uh, the kingdom of God in my life or see uh, God's blessing come through. Or maybe you say, this is my allotted lot, this is my faith, and I can't experience the kingdom of God in my life. Uh, but, you know, God has given you and me this kingdom mandate. And what is that kingdom mandate? To pray and see his kingdom come, his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we need to fight to see his kingdom being expressed uh, in our life. Maybe it's in your marriage, uh, maybe it's in your career, in your business, in your job, you know, uh, in your spiritual walk with God, or it's whether it's your children, parents. Uh, you need to say, God, I know you've called me into a successful marriage, uh, you know, but. Uh, you know, I'm seeing there's strife, there's disunity, there's no compatibility, there is uh, no understanding, uh, there's constant uh, bickering and fighting. Uh, and, you know, you're saying, God, no, this is not how you intended my marriage to be, you know. Or if your home is a place where there is no peace, there is strife, there's hatred, there's disunity, you know, you can't see eye to eye with people and you can't agree with people. And, uh, you know, there's basically brokenness and there's poverty and, you know, there's every kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, unrighteousness and unholiness in your place. And you don't, in your home, you don't accept it, but you say, you know, uh, God, this is not what you have called or you purposed or designed my home to be like. And so because you've not designed it to be like, God, I am just standing. I'm just going to fight. I'm going to see your kingdom come. It will be done on earth, in my home, in my marriage. Uh, or if you see your uh, children, you know, going away from uh, the ways of the Lord, they're not uh, obedient to the things of the Lord. They don't love the Lord. Then you just speak that you know, the God's kingdom as it is in heaven will come into their lives. His will will be done in uh, their lives. You, you just declare that, you know, your home will be a home uh, where there's righteousness, peace, and joy. And likewise, you can, you know, pray for your job, your career, your business. Um, and you're saying, you know, God, in all of these areas, you know, uh, Everything has been withheld from me. I don't see blessings. I don't see prosperity. I see failure. I see uh, rejection. I see hopelessness and disappointment. And uh, don't accept it as they are. But you can say, God, this is not how you intended it to uh, be. You intended it. Uh, in, you intended for me to live in righteousness, peace, joy, to be the head and not the tail, for my cup to overflow, um, of, uh, you know, for, pe for, uh, for uh, you know, for my life to be a peaceful one, my marriage to be a place of uh, a, a bonding, of understanding, of your love being manifested, of your goodness being manifested in my home, uh, in my provisions, uh, favor of God in my job, in my career, in my business, uh, you know, supernatural blessings. And, uh, you know, uh, and if you're seeing everything, you know, we tell you need to speak uh, because you carry the kingdom of God. You carry the kingdom authority and power and you have the power to influence your situations, your marriage, your family, your children uh, by decreeing and speaking uh, the prayer, the kingdom mandate that God has asked us to uh, pray uh, and also to declare his words uh, over your uh, situation. So the question is, you know, uh, will you fight or will you just walk away or accept things uh, as it is? If you walk away and accept things just as it, it is, you know, you have already lost it. It's not that God has designed your marriage, your health, your children, your business, your uh, job uh, to be in that situation. Uh, but, you know, there are things in the kingdom that we need to fight 
uh, we need to take things forcefully. We need to fight, step in and take what is ours because the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. So sometimes, you know, we say how long you know, to fight. How long should this, uh, you know, I've been standing for so long, I've just been fighting, I'm tired, I just want to give up. There seems no ray of light, there seems no hope. But Paul says in Ephesians chapter 6, he says, put on the full armor of God, and you, when you have done everything, you know, stand. You know, when you have done everything, he says, stand. So keep standing, keep fighting. You know, there are some battles that we need to keep standing, we need to keep fighting, we need to do everything, and... Um, you know, uh, but one thing is sure, even as we keep standing, we keep fighting against the enemy, whether it's it's Satan, his forces, his curses, his plans, his schemes, or whether it's things of the flesh, you know, when we overcome it, when we crucify the things of the flesh, you know, we will win because the victory is already ours, okay? Uh, so there's a realm of God's kingdom that God requires us to be warrior-like in the spirit, he requires you and me to keep on fighting. He requires you and me, uh, you know, having done all to stand, continue standing, keep standing, keep declaring God's word, decree God's word, you know, uh, keep putting on that armor. And, uh, you know, God has given you the weapons you need to do, use. Use those weapons. Keep standing, keep fighting. The victory was, uh, will ultimately be yours, will be ultimately ours. So there's a kingdom mandate on our life. So if you want to see the kingdom of God in our lives, uh, in uh, in these areas, uh, we need to press it. So even as we um, pursue the kingdom of God, there are a few things we need to uh, pursue to fulfill this mandate. The first thing is uh, in everything, you know, we need to be in subjection to the king. So um, even as we're pursuing this kingdom of God, we need to do some things to fulfill this mandate. So the first thing is in everything we submit to the king. So the first step is in fulfilling our kingdom mandate is everything in our lives uh, must be in submission to the king of this kingdom. Where we say, God, everything in my life is about you and your kingdom. You know, uh, it's also when God's kingdom becomes that great pearl uh, of great prize in our lives. Uh, when it, when the kingdom of God becomes like that treasure in that field, uh, nothing less. You know, the king and the kingdom so consumes us uh, that you and I say, God, I'm willing to give up everything to pursue your uh, kingdom. We're saying, God, for me. Your kingdom is that treasure in that field and that pearl of great worth. And I'm willing to leave everything aside, every sin, everything of the flesh, every desire of the flesh, every evil desire of the flesh. And, and I'm willing to give up everything, God, and just go behind, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, pursuing your, your kingdom, pursuing the king. So everything in our life should, uh, you know, now be focused or should now be centered on the king and his kingdom. And everything must be in subjection to the king. Now, Jesus said um, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. So he says, Seek ye first the kingdom okay, and his righteousness. So we should be saying, God, in everything uh, in my life is about that kingdom. No, I'm consumed by your kingdom. And it is that treasure in that field, uh, that pearl of great worth in my life. And everything in my life is going to be about that kingdom. It's telling God the reason that I live is not to see uh, myself, you know, just climbing up the ladder of success, being a you know famous person, earning a lot of money, living in, in luxury. But the reason I live it to see is to see your kingdom come. The reason I live, the reason I work, the reason I'm getting married, the reason that we're having children, the reason that I'm studying in a Bible college, uh, or the reason that I'm doing business, whatever we are doing, we are saying, God, the reason why we're doing it is to see your kingdom come and your will be done on earth at, as it is in heaven. That's when, you know, when we pray like this, when we think like that, this, and when we declare this and we desire this, you know, that's when we begin, uh, we begin fulfilling 
uh, the kingdom mandate. Uh, and that's when, you know, the kingdom of God has become like that pearl of great worth or that, that field that has that uh, uh, treasure. It will become like that for us. So because we're saying, God, you know, I want everything in my life uh, to have meaning uh, for the kingdom, uh, I want to live for the extension of the kingdom. I want to live for the sake of the kingdom of God. Uh, so when we study, you know, uh, we, when you're studying, you're saying, God, you know, I'm going to position myself in that place where I can do something for the kingdom. Uh, when you are uh, pursuing a career, you're saying, God, this career is so that I can position myself in a place that I can see your kingdom come. Uh, when you are in a job, you, know, you can say, God, this is the place that I position myself so that, you know, I can see I can do something for your kingdom or even if you're taking wherever you're living or you're building a house you're moving to a new apartment or you're moving to another place or you're moving to another job you're saying God you know I'm moving here to position myself in that place um, so that I can I can do something for your uh, kingdom you know the job that I'm doing I want it uh, to make a difference for the kingdom even my marriage God I'm positioning myself so that you know we together can do something for your kingdom so everything about your life is about the kingdom and we must uh, also welcome the king's domain in, into every area of our lives and allow it to touch our everyday living okay I'll stop here because it's time up uh, we, I have to go for another class and so do all of you uh, anyone has any questions Any questions? Okay, so if you have no questions, then uh, please live the kingdom mandate that God has called you. Uh, you know, see the kingdom mandate being influenced into your life and your situations and change, changing the world because that is what God paid the price for us to live for and that is how he wants us to live. Okay, thank you everyone. Um, have a blessed uh, day and a week ahead. I'll see you next week. God bless you all. Bye-bye.